that is the sound of our heartbeat. We all have a beating heart to pump out blood to all parts of our body, but how do plants transport their water, sucrose and mineral ions since they themselves don't have a heart? How do plants transport water from its surrounding soil and move upward to the tips of leaf and even to the very tallest of tree? The answer is yes, plants do have an amazing transport system in which that is what we are going to discover in this video. Transport system in plants involve vascular tissue which are xylem and phloem and we are going to focus on the xylem as it involves in transporting water and mineral ions in plants. Let's divide the transport of water and mineral ions into two parts. The first one is from the surrounding soil to the root xylem and the second one is from the xylem in stem move upward to the leaf. Basically, osmosis is the movement of water molecules from the higher water potential region to the lower water potential region across semi-permeable membrane. You can see from the diagram that the water diffuses from the surrounding soil with higher water potential to the lower water potential, which is root hair cells. One question. Why do root hair cells always receive water? This is because of the concentration such as mineral ions, sugar will lower the water potential of the root hair cells. Hence, water will keep on diffusing into root hair cells by osmosis. And the movement of water from the root hair cells into the root xylem are in three different pathways, which are apoplastic pathway, symplastic pathway and transmembrane pathway. Via apoplast pathway, water and mineral ions move along the matrix cell wall and extracellular spaces. However, the movement of water is disrupted at endodermis by Kasparian strip, which is a belt made up of suberin, which is a water waterproof material. Water from cell wall will cross selective permeable plasma membrane of the endodermis cells, and the water will join symplastic pathway to reach xylem. The Kasparian strip is actually helps in preventing the accumulation in the xylem from leaking back into the soil solution. Next is symplastic pathway. By using this pathway, water moves from one cell to another cell via cytoplasm and plasmodesmata. Take note that the plasmodesmata is the tiny gaps in cells that connect the cytoplasm of the adjacent cells. So, water will travel through these tiny gaps into xylem. Via transmembrane pathway, water and mineral ions move repeatedly across plasma membranes as they pass from cell to cell. Alright, so we know that water enters root hair cells by osmosis, but how about mineral ions? Mineral ions enter plants either by active transport or by passive transport. It actually depends on the concentration gradient between the surrounding soil and the root hair cells. And once mineral ions are inside root hair cells, they dissolve in water. Then, both of them will be transported via apoplast, symplast and transmembrane pathway until they reach a xylem. Then, they will be carried up by transpiration pool upward. Okay, now water has arrived at xylem. And now, how does water can travel upward? What makes water possible to move against gravity? And what keep water can travel upward to the tips of leaf? There are three ways. Transpiration pool, cohesion tension mechanism and root pressure. The first way is by transpiration pool. The hot and windy environment causing water in plants to evaporate from stomata through transpiration. So, the loss of water from the cells to the stomata will cause the water potential of the cells become lower. And water will be pulled from their neighboring cells which having higher water potential. Now, the water column is under tension as the water molecules are being pulled upward and the pulling force is known as transpiration pull. The second one is cohesion tension mechanism. 
Okay, we have to know that the xylem vessels have strong and lignified walls to withstand the tension and prevent them from collapsing. Okay, so the uh, within the xylem vessel, water molecule exists as a long continuous column in which it, it is due to the cohesion at and adhesion properties of water. Okay, so the first one is cohesion. So cohesion is basically attractive force between mo water molecules due to the hydrogen bond. Okay, between water and water. Okay, and second one is adhesion. So basically adhesion is attractive force between water molecules and xylem walls due to the hydrogen bond. Meaning here, it is the adhesion is actually attractive force between two different polar molecules which are here um, water molecules and xylem walls okay so the cohesion of water uh, meaning that between uh, water and water molecule so the, this cohesion will hold the water molecules together without separating and adding to that okay so the adhesion of water to the xylem wall okay will help the water string fighting the gravity from downward so that they can move upward without breaking and separating. The last one is root pressure. Root pressure is generated due to the accumulation of mineral ion in steel. And what is steel? Okay. Steel is a vascular cylinder in root where we can find xylem and phloem. Okay, so at night, when there is almost zero or zero transpiration, given there is no sunlight and the, the wind is not as windy as day, okay, so mineral ions are pumped actively from root cells into root xylem. So the accumulation of mineral ions in root xylem will reduce water potential in the xylem. Hence, it will draw more water from nearby cells with high water potential. Okay. So, as more water enters through xylem, this will create a pressure called hydrostatic pressure that will push the water up the stem. One of the effects of root pressure is guttation. So, what is actually guttation? Guttation is a, is a water droplet that can be found at the edge of leaf in the morning. Okay, so it is because of the root pressure that occurs at night that will force out water to the edge of leaf as in the form of droplets.